Guys, it's time to upgrade the Bandit XL5, and I got all kinds of RPM parts, Traxxas part, and the Exotex rear axles. Yeah, I'm gonna get all this put in. We're taking it for a drive. Let's get to that table. This is what I've got to put in. Now, I'm not gonna do a spur gear just yet, but I do have those options right there, and they are different than the stock RPM shock towers because, yeah, yeah, uh, they're kind of needed, right? So I've got the VXL hubs and VXL links, and then that right there, the big old Exotech. These are actually for the drag slash CVD set, which are supposed to be a bolt-in part for the Bandit. Yeah, got my bearings too. Uh, bushings in the front, bushings in the back, bushings in the motor. I'm not expecting this thing to, to roll completely free, but it certainly has some rolling resistance. What I've got for this video is obviously the bearing hubs and all that. So we're gonna see if that actually makes a difference. This is what the front's getting right here. If there's anything special, spectacular, or really technical, I'm gonna show that to you. If not, I'm just simply gonna bolt all this stuff right on. Getting all this loose is just basic bolts with Phillips head screws. Basic bolts, you can get to everything, the shock tower, um, camera links, steering knuckles, all that stuff. Super simple. Just simply pull this off, take those loose at the knuckles, which you gotta take off anyway. It's super simple. Stock tower on the right, RPM tower on the left. Mucho more beefy. The steering knuckles are held in by pins with E-clips. As you pop these clips off and back on, make sure you're careful. If not, you'll send these to the other side of the planet. Putting the adjustable camera links on, this right here is actually hitting and limiting droop and also limiting my ability to add camber on the front end. So I'm gonna trim the arm. And there we go, I've got plenty of room. I have to assume this was actually a limiting factor with the box stock setup as well. And the reason I trim the arm versus the caster block, I feel the arm has enough beef to spare. The caster block, yeah, not so much. Those aren't known for being the strongest out there. But anyway, they are trimmed. Oh, that's so much better. So much better. As I'm preparing for the back, I realized I showed the rear hubs when I was doing the front. Sorry about that. But also, is that shock tower already bent? The stock one? All right, I guess it's a good thing I got the RPMs, huh? The rear shock tower, I neglected to see this before, has no wing mount, so it is not drilled for that wire to go in there. I guess I get to get creative. The back end is super simple. It just simply unbolts, bolts back up. Stupid simple. I'm going to get the shock tower put on, get the links and all that stuff done, at least as done as I can, and then we're going to get into these Exotechs right here. And here are the Exotech axles right here. They use the four set screws on the flats of the outputs instead of the through screws or the uh, pin screws as you see right there. So it's supposed to have less slump. I don't care about that too much, but I will assemble these just the way they are. And they're actually already assembled as far as the CVD goes. So I just simply get to put these well oiled axles right on in here. And that's it right there. I'm impressed. Very nice. In all honesty, I'm a bit bummed about the wing mount. However, this does give me the opportunity to test a theory from the first drive in that the front was coming up because the wing was just so far up like that. Maybe it was pushing it down. But regardless, let's try this. Okay, what we're seeing there is the resistance in the motor bushings. That's still got a bunch of resistance on that. But at least now we know it's not at the front end, it's not at the rear hubs, it's all in that thing right there. So I guess after this drive, I'll be swapping motors. <laughs> and I've got to go see if I can find the wing mount. I'm sure there's a wing mount that goes into those bolt holes right there. I just gotta go back to A-Main and find it, right? Well, I actually bolted the wing to the plastic body. It's flopping around. I have no idea if it's gonna actually stay. Wow. 
Wow, 2S. I still got the stock pinion gear on this thing. All right, we got that perfectly right there. Oh man, that was perfect right there, wasn't it? So now I can put 3S on this thing. No issues, no worry about the... Uh... Oh! Uh, hmm. Wrong angle. All right, let's try it again. Yeah, I mean, it's right here. All it needs is a little more pinion gear, and 2S is perfect. I mean, look at that. So 2S clears this. Uh, the whole 2S, 3S thing. I'm kind of thinking maybe make it 2S. But then... <laughs> it is consistently the exact same spot. See, that's perfect right over there. Nice little run. Woo! Oh, look at that. I got a nice little cut on that. <laughs> I just need a little bit more. A little bit more and I could clear this thing. Okay, let's get that little bit more because I know I can do 3S now, right? Now with 3S. Oh, oh. I'm thinking uh I may have to just keep this at 2S. I don't know. I have to just see what the, what the drivers around here want, because I'll go either way with it. But, uh, I mean, 2S, I think, with a pinion gear, but... <laughs> oh, that was awesome. 2S with a pinion gear, I, 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 I still don't know. Still got to see how the track reacts. This thing is nothing but a dot on the screen. Still got to see how it reacts, you know, when the track is fluffy and soft and all that. Let's go try something else real quick. Woo! Spun that little motor up on that one, didn't it? Man, a little set of paddles. Yeah, we gotta do the paddles now that I got some steel drive line in this thing. It'll be awesome. Those little paddles are gonna rip. Hear that motor zing? Zing! Heck, I don't know. That, that was beautiful. This thing is really strong enough on 3S, guys. You know, this is my very first bandit. Never had a bandit before. I kind of want to try brushless on it. <laughs> no, hey. Thought I was gonna kill myself, didn't you guys? <laughs> Ooh. Ah, I wanna keep I gotta make sure this thing stays light as well. So I'm just kind of driving around a little bit, just kind of getting the hang of this thing. Just a little rib on the front. This is different. Woo! <laughs> Almost went over my head on that one. <laughs> I was maybe 10 inches away from the camera on that one. So that was pretty close. 
<laughs> I was a way away from that one. Probably about three feet. You know, for such a base vehicle, it's actually handling really good. It's got the 82, 83, 83 tooth spur gear on it, which is what it came with out of the box. So, see, that's 3S. I'm letting up on the jump so I don't go nose high with it. Nice. See, 3S is working really good. I don't know, I'm just, I'm completely confused as to what I should go with here. 2S is obviously the, the least abusive. So, and that would actually keep it cheap because you have less chance for breakage. Possibly no need for the metal arm or the metal axle shaft or anything, you know? So, Got his benefits, but that motor got so much drag on them bushings. Nice. And there we have another successful run with the little bandit. It took 3S again. It took 3S again. I'm gonna gear this thing up. I'm also gonna change this motor out. <clears throat> and another successful run with the bandit. Now, these mods that I did are more for durability and adjustability. Uh, the VXL is about $320 or so. This is about $200. I can see if I really wanted to go brushless, I would get I've got the VXL. But brushless isn't really a thing, even though I'm kind of interested in it. But this right here is where I'm going to be. You notice I've already got the little sand tires on. I believe these are actually for the Mini E Revo, the 116th E Revo. So they fit, they're like the exact same size. So you guys know what's up next, right? Once I get this done, well, you know, have you noticed there's a method to my modifications? I knew the stock plastic shafts wouldn't take a whole lot of abuse. These did not go on until I got the steel shafts in. But anyway, there's a method to my madness when it comes to modification and building up. I don't just simply go to the biggest motor because Especially when you know, when you know the drive line is not gonna take it. Gotta have some common sense, guys. Ding ding. But anyways, it's ready to go. So guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. The mods are needed, must-haves for performance and durability. So check that description. I'll link up all the mods I just put in down below. Make sure you check that out. There are affiliate links. Amy and eBay, Amazon, and Horizon helps out the channel when you guys use them. So the good old bandit says. Check that description, use those links, hit that subscribe and ring that bell. You're awesome, Haley. Catch you later. If you're still watching, you are top shelf. You are the cream of the crop, the pick of the litter. You are phenomenal. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. Now, down below, there are links for the products you see. Also for channel memberships, if you guys wanna be a part. Channel members get early viewing on pretty much everything that I can, so. Guys, check that description. There's a lot of info down there. Thank you all for watching.